here we are in uh, Delta Crunch, so let's go into funnels. So um, we've completely rebuilt our funnel tool. Um, I don't know how many people saw our old one, but our old one was based on um, measuring how people were going through a funnel uh, live, which, which had some advantages, but one of the disadvantages was that you had to wait for people to, to populate the funnel. Now we, we have basically a retrospective funnel, so what it does is populates a funnel based on uh, the event data that you've given us um, over the last however many days you've been connected to Delta DNA. Um, but conceptually it works in exactly the same way. You build steps that are based on your events, and then um, if people pass that step, they'll flow into the next one. So just as a kind of simple, um, simple example, let's build a really simple funnel, and then you can see how it works. So you, you can give your, the best thing to do, of course, is just to choose the name first, the event name. So let's just have game started. That's some, something everyone's going to do, and we'll just let the name be that. Um, we'll just add another step, which is, say, uh, mission started. And we'll choose our mission started event. Oop. Um, now, the good thing is you can add any refinements. So the refinements are basically any field which will come in on that event. So on a mission started event, we'll have things like the episode name, um, the difficulty, the name of the mission, etc. So let's choose uh, the mission ID, and we'll just say that's equal to no, mission one. So the nice thing about our new funnel tool is that you can you can press run basically at any time, and what that'll do is then build the funnel straight away for you. So for today, we have 100% of people of the game start, but only 10% of people have started mission one. And that might seem like a very small number, but that's basically because we haven't clicked the new users only button. So we're getting lots of the existing users who are, of course, well past mission one. So if we click new users and we run it again, um, we'll see a much better flow. So actually, everyone who has a game start starts at least one mission, which is, which is good, and that's the way the game design. <laughs> so the good thing is that you can edit these steps at any time, so we can go and we can press this button to edit the step, and then we can just edit this step and change it to whatever we like. So perhaps we want to look at mission two instead, and then if we press run again, it'll then just run the funnel again. Um, and we should see that now, of course, because mission two, uh, we've got a fewer people passing through to that step. You can see over on the left here, we have the percentages, which tell us um, how many people are passing out of each step. So 100% of people um, come out with a game start, but only 82% of people um, come out with a mission start. And this is the percentage of the previous step. So if we add another one, so say we put in here um, mission three, and we'll choose uh, mission started. So similarly, same as before, except we'll set this to three, and then we'll press run. Um, so you can see that 82% of people start mission two, but only 48% of people start mission three. Um, and that's, yeah, okay, good, good. All right, cool. Now, the other cool thing that you could do in the funnel tool is to set the date range. So at the top here, you can choose how far back in your data you want to look, or you can look across a specific range. Um, this is really good because um, it allows you to look at places in time that might have been interesting. But the other thing which is good about it is it allows you to build your funnel in an iterative way. So one of the cool things is, of course, if we, if we choose today, there's only a small number of users, so we can test out our funnel and we'll come back quite quickly. If the point here is that if you have a very complicated funnel, it's best to just use it on today's data first uh, to get an idea if that's the funnel that you want, because obviously you can change anything at any time. Um, whoops, I just deleted that one. But anyway, um, you can change anything at any time. And so testing it out, just using a small amount of data and then, then running it um, to get the result that you want on a large amount of data is a good way to use the funnel tool. Um, so one thing which uh, I'm going to talk about, and I'm sure most people actually know this, but um, let's just start a new one, a new funnel, just for this example. Whoop. I can't use this Mac. Okay, let's just delete this one. Okay, so start a new funnel. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that the funnel, the funnel tool is causal, so you have to pass each step to end up in the next one. And it gets really obvious if you set up a funnel which just has the same events in it. So say if we have um, steps which is, say, session one. So we have a game start here. Make sure it's new players. Yep. And then if we just have you know, a funnel full of game starts, right? 
um, this will be session two, and this will be session three. So let's run that. And so what this will do is it'll take all the people that have had one game start, which is of course 100% of people, and then we'll we'll see the number of people that have a second game start, and on you know the number that have a third game start, and so on. And you can see that to be in step three, you have to be in step two. You the you have to flow through the funnel. So it's not just simply basically building a histogram. Um, we are making a funnel where people have to come in the top and then in each step you're only selecting people that were in the last one. And that's quite good because you can do things like this where you can say, you know, I can build a session funnel in the funnel tool by using game starts. And similarly, I could build a purchase funnel by doing transaction events, see how many people purchase once, twice, three times, and, and similarly. Um, so it's quite good in that way, but it's important to remember that it is causal. So each step um, you have to you have to remember that people will only flow through to the next one if they're in that one. You can do this if you say flow through to the next step. Let me run it. And now we can see actually that all these people are flowing through into session three. So um, by clicking the uh, flow through to the next step, you're basically saying, okay, don't worry about people not passing this condition. Um, just worry about the last one. Okay, so um, the other things you can do about fun with funnels, of course, is you can save them. So we can call this um, a session funnel. Might actually call it webinar session funnel, so we know which one it is. And then you can save it. Um, when you come into your game, there should be a number of funnels already uh, in there, some preset funnels. Um, of, here's our webinar saved one that we just did. There's some mission completed ones, so we can open a mission completed funnel, and this is just has all the missions in it. Um, you can save a funnel as something else. So if we, so this, if you wanted to take an example funnel and change it and say this is my uh, mission funnel, and then click save as, that will essentially create a, a duplicate of this funnel now, and then you can edit it and not worry about corrupting the other one. Um, so the other, there's a couple more cool things you can do in funnels. Um, one of the really great things you can do in funnels is to use segments. So let's just run this funnel. So this is a mission funnel. Um, but what we can do is we can only consider people into the funnel that fall into any segment. So say um, we want to see the difference between spenders and non-spenders. We could choose just the spenders for this funnel and then run it. And now we're seeing just this is how people progress through the game who are who are now spenders. Um, so it's really cool. You can use the segment ability to to see the different paths that people take and possibly understand why those people became spenders or why people became non-spenders, why people became engaged, um, and so on. And of course, you can you can define any any um, segments in here. Um, so you can choose an acquisition channel. Um, or you can choose uh, anything really, any of, any of the, the filters that are there or, or segments based on any of your events. Um, so you can understand, you can build funnels and understand how different types of people are able to do different things in the funnel tool. Um, the important thing to keep in mind about the segments is they'll be defined by their current state. So if you think about a funnel is sort of you know, looking back in time and the segments are going to be defined by what they current, they're currently are. So that's very good. So you can say, okay, I know these people are spenders now. Um, what were they like you know, when they started through to, um, through to now? What, what made them spenders or what made them engaged or what made them something else? Oh, yeah, I didn't say this. Uh, so if you click on the info button, on each bar, it will show you um, basically some statistics about <clears throat> when people fell into that funnel, um, into that funnel step. So the first participant and the last participant, although for these kind of events, of course, they're going to be linked to the range that you used and the percentages and the percentage of the previous. So, so here we can see stuff like the total percentage of people that managed to make it to step three is 55, but that's 62% of the previous step. And then similarly, you know, people who make it to mission four, forty percent overall make it to mission four, but actually that's seventy-two percent of the of the previous step. And so you can identify quickly where the people are really dropping off. And you can see, you know, only sixty-two percent of people that finish mission two finish mission three. So for Delta Crunch, that's a that's a problem. Um, whereas mission two and mission four are probably okay. 
Um, I should have also said you can add as many um, refinements as you like. So you don't just have to use one, you can use other ones. So you can say, okay, well, I want to look at mission four, but I also want to look at the, when the uh, you know, lives balance, say, is equal to five. So in Delta Crunch, you start with five lives. So how many people made it to mission four without losing any lives? And actually, not very many people made it that far without losing a single life. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we can just remove them by clicking on the X. And again. So that was quite quick, but I'm not sure what else there is to show about funnels. It's quite a simple tool, actually. Um, but it's quite a powerful tool, um, and I think if with our new um, our new interface to it, it's actually really, really good and really easy to discover um, quite interesting things about your data. Um, so if there aren't any questions, shall we leave it there? Louise? Uh, yeah, just give it a minute or so, because it can sometimes take um, a minute to, to type out the question in the okay. box. So, um, but yeah. So one thing which we uh, will be doing in the next release but isn't currently possible, but it will be great when you can, is to you'll be able to export these funnels um, both as, a, as an image um, but also onto your custom dashboards. So as well as having slice and dice queries um, and measure charts in your custom dashboards, you'll also be able to have your, your user-defined funnels, um, which will actually be quite cool. Yeah, that would be handy to have, actually. That would be good. And of course, if you have any questions about any of the tools on the platform, um, please do get in touch and we'll come back to you. But thanks for coming along um, and I hope that the webinar was useful. All right, thanks everyone.